Hello, everybody. This is the first of our three standing tree measurement lectures. Uh, and the first one today is going to focus on uh, dBH or diameter at breast height. And that's what's being uh, done by this gentleman in the picture. And sometimes, uh, even though diameter is a very simple measurement, it can be very difficult. So um, we want to make sure we know what we're doing and that we do it accurately. So let's talk a little bit about diameter. So the three most common um, things that we'll talk about in terms of um, getting tree measurements are diameter at breast height, which is the easiest measurement to get, tree height, which is going to be a little more complicated because it really depends on the size of your trees and how dense your forest is, uh, and then basal area, which is going to um, give us the idea of how many trees and the size of the trees that are in the forest and that's going to be that number is going to come from the diameter measurements that we get and so that's going to be the order that we talk about them in this class so today's lecture is going to focus on diameter um, the other thing that we can get from um, tree diameter when we put it with tree height is we can get cubic volume because if we take our our diameters and our diameters get us to basal area which get which would then be a square footage measurement of the of the forest then we can combine that with tree height and we can get a a volume per acre of the forest and then that's really useful uh for our inventory uh when we're trying to then do calculations and and find out stocking rates stand and stock rates for the forest so when we're talking about dbh we're talking about trying to get the the width of the individual trees and dbh uh, by itself tells us um, tells us about the tree that we're looking at but then we're going to apply that to um, to diameter class distributions and to basal area to then tell us about what the forest overall or the stand overall looks like so diameter at breast height which we just call dbh it's um, the the specific definition of dbh or diameter at breast height is the diameter of the tree measured at four and a half feet or 1.37 meters above the ground on the uphill side of the tree. And um, the easiest way to do this uh, in my mind is to take the um, uh, measuring tape that you have, put it on the ground, pull it up to you and do that about three or four times and pull it up and find where four and a half feet is on your body so that you know that you can find that spot and then look across from the tree and figure out where you're going to be putting your, your measuring tape every time. Um, one thing that's important to know and seeing it on this picture on the left, it's important that you get it on the uphill side of the tree every time because you want to make sure that it's a, it's a good consistent measurement and sometimes based on the um, the topography that you're dealing with, you might get be for you might have your your breast height, but because of the the hill on the same tree, you might be down here measuring breast height as opposed to on the uphill side of the tree, getting a measurement on that side, which would be a much more accurate measurement of of the uh, of the the bowl of the tree itself. One of the important things to really think about uh, when you're when you're doing this measurement and trying to get it is you're is you're making one measurement for the entire bowl or the entire trunk of the tree, and so uh, it's really important that you that you look at it. And we're going to look at some different uh, measurement scenarios in a little bit, but um, it's important because you're only making this one measurement, so you don't want to have it to where it's an area that's bulging out or an area that's not representative of the log that you're measuring because you're measuring um, the butt you're measuring the butt log of the tree which is usually your most uh, valuable log once you decide to harvest the tree so it's really important to make sure we get a nice accurate size of that log to make sure that we're we're best representing um, the the measurement um, that we're getting and the the tree that we see as a whole. So um, what we're measuring the tree with uh, those instruments are called dendrometers. 
And uh, the most common dendrometers that we would be using is a D tape, which is this one here um, up above. That's uh, it's just set up to measure the diameter of the of the tree. So you're going to pull it out. You're going to attach the little uh, nail or clip part at the end to one side. You're going to take it around the tree, and then you're going to pull the tape tight. And what happens is you're actually taking the circumference of the tree but because on this tape it's already taken into account um, the circumference and then knowing that circumference is just pi times diameter it's taken the, the numbers for circumference divided by 3.14 and so you can read on this actual tape the diameter of the tree that you're measuring uh, a logger's tape you'll be able to do the same thing but what's nice about a logger's tape is that one side of the logger's tape will be a, a D tape and give you these same measurements and then the other side will be a measuring tape which becomes useful um, when we when we do tree heights and we'll talk about that later. Um, other ways that you can get uh, other dendrometers and other ways you can get the DBH measurement uh, is through calipers which are these down here at the bottom which you open and close around um, the the tree and and read a measurement uh, a Biltmore stick or, or um, there's all sorts of other um, kind of names that they go under uh, tree grading stick and other things like that it's a more antiquated way a uh, much less accurate way of measuring the tree and actually pretty hard to uh, to get used to uh, you're gonna get a much more accurate number using uh, a diameter tape than you are the Biltmore stick. And um, if nothing else is available, uh, using a measuring tape and then having to uh, divide all your numbers by 3.14 or even a string and making different marks on the string and then um, taking the string back and measuring it out later. Those are other ways that you can do it if no other equipment was available to you. Uh, the last way that we'll, um, we'll learn how to uh, how to come up with DBH at breast height is once you've done this enough and once you're used to it, we'll talk about estimating um, tree size and being able to just visually go, well, that's a six inch tree or that's an eight inch tree or that's a 16 inch tree. So with the diameter tape, um, you want to, it's a pretty simple procedure. You want to wrap it around the tree. Um, the slower way to do it is to put your nail in or put your clip in and walk around the tree. Um, once you get used to doing it a lot and quicker, um, especially with a logger's tape, you're going to um, have much more of a Indiana Jones uh, type of, uh, of wrap around the tree, which is you take, you take out a long, um, a long, um, part of your tape and you and you throw it around to your other hand and then you wrap it tight around the tree um, that at first may sound like oh really you're just going to kind of whip it around the tree yeah when you have to go do this a few hundred times a day it takes a lot of effort out of you to put it in there and walk around every tree and do that over and over again especially if you're in an area with lots of topography and you're walking up and down or you gotta you know to get to the next tree you gotta go on your hands and knees or any of these things that can make it difficult sure if i'm just walking around in a park yeah i'll walk around the tree no big deal take my time with the measurement if i've got to go do 200 300 trees that day i'm going to try and come up with a quicker way to do it uh, the big thing is I really want to make sure I hit that four and a half feet, which I know for me is, is right about here on my chest. So I want to make sure I hit that same spot on the tree. And then I want to make sure that my tape is, is level and it's pulled tight. So I want to make sure that the tape is straight all the way around the tree and that it's pulled tight so that I'm getting an exact measurement. Um, usually with a loggers tape, um, your your measuring tape side uh, usually 75 feet or 100 feet is going to be uh, common um, and then your other side is the is the diameter tape and remember the diameter part is just actually it's the same thing as the measuring tape it's just been divided by 3.14 to account for 
that formula of circumference of a of a circle. And so um, all all the difference between um, between a D tape and a measuring tape is just that geometric relationship with pi. Um, one other thing that's important and why the the diameter tape or the logger tape is the preferred method of measuring trees is because trees aren't perfect cylinders. So we're using the idea of a, of a circle or a cylinder, but really um, they're not perfect cylinder. They're going to be slightly irregularly shaped. And so uh, most of our measurements are going to be positively biased or overestimate, whereas with the the D tape, the D tape can wrap around all the little nooks and crannies and give us our closest um, measurement in terms of accuracy to the uh, to what the tree uh, diameter actually is. Now, this example of this young woman is uh, fantastic. So, the she's got um, four and a half feet on her, which my guess, uh, based on on what we see so far, is that she's probably pretty short. So even though it's diameter at, at breast height for her, that's much higher because she's a little short. Um, and then uh, she's got the tape nice and level. Looks like it's nice and tight. And then she's also crouching down a little bit to make sure that when she looks at the reading, she sees it at eye level so that she's not, um, she's not um, reading it incorrectly. Um, one thing to think about uh, just in terms of um, kind of understanding like why did it call why was it called diameter at breast height my idea is that um, most people were probably about my my height who were doing this because I for me it's right about my my breastplate where um, where four and a half feet is so um, I think that's why they called it a diameter at breast height and then also um, why measure the tree there? And the idea to me is what's simpler and what's what's simple and what's easy to understand other than when I look straight ahead at this tree and I put my hands out, I can say that tree is this big. I think that's that's the idea behind diameter at breast height, and I think that's why um, it's a it's a very simple measurement and and it's it's useful. And so when we're calculating it with a tape, it's really important to think about this idea that um, even though we're using this relationship of circumference to diameter, the reason why the tape is important is because if I look at this tree here, this backside, it's irregular, but with a tape, I can really wrap around and get this side that's not going to be part of this perfect circle. If I was using calipers, it'd kind of be like these measurements right here where um, that would be one side of the caliper and that would be the other side of the caliper and I, I couldn't really represent this well. Now I would take another measurement with the caliper 90 degrees but I don't know that I'd still be able to represent this well right here, this part right, well right here. I'd probably be overestimating the diameter of this tree with calipers but I can wrap a tape around there and get a much, a much closer to um, a much more accurate reading. So um, just kind of going through the idea of how does the tape work. So um, for a tree like this, when I wrap my tape around that tree and this guy looks to, to go and read it, what he's going to do is he's going to see um, 28 inches. But what that tape actually did was it, it wrapped around that tree and it wrapped around that tree and measured 88 inches. But because that um, because the tape is already divided by pi 3.14159, what he sees on that tape is it's, he sees it saying 28 inches. Uh, so if we were to use the calipers, uh, it's important to remember that you'd want to get two separate measurements at a minimum, and they want to be 90 degrees from each other. So I'd want to measure the tree here like that and then I'd want to go 90 degrees and measure the tree like that to get um, the best measurement of the tree and so I get at least two measurements um, up to four measurements no more than four 
and then I would average those out, and that would be my uh, my diameter or DVH for that tree. The one thing that's also really hard with uh, using calipers is that if you have really big trees, you have to have really big calipers, which makes them really difficult to lug around the forest. Um, so we're going to get all sorts of numbers, and these tapes can get pretty accurate depending on the type of tape you're using. You can have some that go down into the uh, tenths of an inch and some that go down into the hundredths of an inch. And um, if we're if we're doing um, certain things in the forest, we might need to know uh, really accurately um, the the actual size of the tree. But for a lot of the stuff in terms of just basic inventory that we'd be doing, we don't really need to know um, the tree that accurately. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take those trees and we're going to group them into diameter classes. And so uh, the most common classes are one inch classes and two inch classes. So let's say I've got a DBH tape and it and it's a it's one that goes down to the hundredths. So I get a I get a reading like um, like seven point six eight. Um, what's going to happen is usually with um, diameter classes it rounds um, it rounds up and so what we're going to do to offset that bias is that for anything that we measure down in the hundredths we're going to round down so if we measured a dbh of 7.68 that's a 7.6 just like if we measured a 5.25 it's a 5.2 if it's a 5.28 it's still a 5.2 just because we're going to round down um, to in order to offset the other bias that we have in our measurements. Now, in terms of these diameter classes, what's important to remember is uh, whatever diameter class we're we're doing, that that number is going to be the midpoint of the class. So let's take one inch classes for example. So they're going to be so if you look at a diameter distribution, you're going to see something like this one up here this is two inch classes because i can see six eight ten twelve fourteen but if it's a one inch class it would say five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and so on so if i wanted to to if i thought one of my trees was going to fit into uh the 10 inch class what size would it have to be well it'd have to on my tape i'd have to read something between 9.6 to 10.5 so in a one inch class, anything that is 0.6 or higher rounds up into the next class. And so that's that offset why we said we're going to round down if the number's in the hundredths because we're rounding up in the tenths into these one inch classes. And so let's take an example of a tree that's 8.7. If it's a one inch class, that's a nine inch tree. If it's an 8.5 inch tree, that's an 8 inch tree in a 1 inch class. In the 2 inch classes, you're going to go from 0.1 to 0 0.0. So the 8 inch class, it's the 8 is going to be the midpoint. So you're going to go from 7.1 to 9.0 because I'm going from 0.1 to 0 and 8's in the middle. You never have any odd numbered two inch classes just like we can see here six eight ten twelve fourteen so let's say something like a if we're doing a two inch class a nine point four inch tree in that two inch class that tree's in the ten inch class if that nine point four inch tree if we were only doing one inch classes that'd be a nine inch tree but so the key to remember is the two inch class it goes from 0.1 to zero and your your whatever the number of the class is is going to be the midpoint so let's say it's a 12 12 inch two 12 inch two inch class 12's in the middle so that means i've got 11 and i've got 13. so it goes from 11.1 to 13.0 because 12's in the middle and anything between 11.1 .1 and 13.0, we're just going to call a 12-inch tree. 
if it's a one inch class and I'm trying to do the 12 inch class as a one inch class that's going to go from 11.6 to 12.5 anything that falls in there just call it a 12 inch tree and the whole reason for that is we can start getting these diameter distributions which will be really helpful um, come inventory time to really under start kind of understanding our forest and being able to tell exactly what we have out there so when I look at this this diameter distribution here from large mountain so in terms of trees per acre I've got a lot of trees per acre in the 20 to 22 inch class so what this tells me is I've got big trees do I have really big trees I've got a lot of big trees but I don't have a lot of really really big trees but I do also have a lot of smaller trees too so this stand to me is a I can already see things like this is a growing stand this stand has not reached maturity the stand ha uh, not yet but it's it's on its way there it's definitely does it's definitely not past maturity because it's not a bunch of um, older trees but it still has some older trees and some younger trees so it's it's a stand it's a mature stand but probably hasn't totally reached full maturity yet and I've got a lot of trees that are that are coming up that are good sized trees I've got a good amount of trees that are already in um, what we would call uh, saw timber sized trees and um, we don't have too many of the of the little trees that aren't aren't um, aren't useful yet or only um, pulpwood sized trees so um, it's really important to just be able to to start being able to take our numbers and not just say well here this is a this is a 7.5 inch tree or this is a 4.8 inch tree that's that's fine and all and it gives us some information but looking at this diameter distribution this is where we're able to now actually interpret and start to take what we know from ecology what we what we'll learn about um, from the silviculture and be able to start applying these numbers to be to really be able to understand our stand or understand our forest and what we actually are seeing out there and so I mean that's that's how you measure um, DBH that's how that's what it's uh, used for so let's kind of talk about just some different measurement scenarios to make sure that we understand um, how and why we're measuring in certain places so um, really it's important to understand that you're going to deal with some irregular trees and you're also going to deal with with slope so you want uh, to have standardized uh, ways of doing things as much as possible and so um, looking at the example here on the right um, here's our basic tree on level ground we're going to go four and a half feet or 1.37 meters we're going to measure dbh if we have a slope we're going to go on the uphill side of the tree measure dbh if our tree is leaning we're still going to find that uphill side of the tree and we're going to go with the lean of the tree and we're going to go four and a half feet up and we're going to measure this one right here um, on the right we have this branch deformity at dbh now we want to since we're making only one measurement for that log we want to make sure that it's the it's an accurate measurement and it represents that whole log and so we're going to actually go above this deformity and how far up do we go we go far enough up that it's not there's no um, part of the log still being affected by the deformity um, and that's usually going to end up being you know something like um, a few inches above uh, and then so I'll go up there and I'll get my diameter measurement if we have a tree down here at the bottom left that forks below breast height you have two trees so on this one right here if dbh is up there I've got this tree on the right and this tree on the left and that will be two trees if I have it to where dbh um, has the it's below the fork I'm gonna I have some swell here and some taper and so what I'm gonna actually do is in this case I'm actually gonna measure below and I'm gonna go all the way till I'm below the taper 
to represent um, this log as best I can. Now this is the one situation where you're taking a measurement and can you look at that that tree and say, is this the best measurement of this tree since it, it forks out? And the answer is it's the best measurement that we can do in terms of DBH. Is it going to be perfect, perfectly accurate for this for this tree? Um, not really, but we're trying to be consistent in our measurements to prevent bias. And so we're going to do our best to represent that tree. And remember, most of the time when we're doing these measurements, that is one tree out of thousands of trees. Or it's or that tree is representative of of a few trees out of a thousand trees. So we we don't necessarily um we're not necessarily too worried about it because there's gonna be other trees um in the forest that that it's gonna that measurement will be okay for in terms of there's so many trees that 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 one not so accurate measurement it it'll be all right so I kind of just went through all of these and so it's just really important to just kind of understand the idea that um, if you have trees with deformities or um, or something happening at DBH that's not uniform to the rest of the log, that you do your best to measure it in a spot that would best represent that log. Same goes here. Um, for This is what uh, the gentleman on the first slide was really dealing with. He was dealing trying to measure a tree that had huge butt swell at the bottom of the tree and trying to go and find and measure a spot where um, the taper is not affecting the log that's actually going to be cut from that tree. So in this um, little graphic here, down here is actually four and a half feet. But you got this huge butt swell that's not going to get cut if they actually go and cut this tree out. And then you've got this area right here where you've got taper still from that butt swell. So you're still not going to get a very good accurate measurement of that log. So you're going to come all the way up here to get your DBH measurement in order to really represent the rest of the, that tree log that's actually going to get cut, cut down. And so there's a little bit of artistry to the science of measuring uh, trees for DBH. Uh, another thing that we're going to do, um, depending on um, what we're what measurements we're trying to get, um, is that we might have to measure uh, the bark thickness. And the reason we would measure the bark thickness is because some some inventory calculations um, they're fine with just using DBH and measuring the outside part of the log. But some measurements um, really want to know. Um, what the log, just the log itself is and not the bark because uh, more than likely um, you're, you're going to have your bark get cut off when you take it to the mill and the tree gets harvested. And so some, some people really want to know um, how thick the bark is so that they can actually tell how much wood they're going to get out of the stem. And so uh, you need a bark gauge like these things here. All of these are bark gauges in the background. To, to be able to measure that. And so um, you're going to use it, um, you're basically just going to punch it into the tree at uh, breast height and you're going to read the measurement. And you can see on this one at the bottom, you can see the, the, um, the measurement. And you'll just read where the, where the little um, plunger part stops. And then that will be your your uh, measurement. And you want to do it similar to the calipers where you want to go get it on one side and then go 90 degrees and get it on the other side as well. And so that's, that's DBH. It's the simplest of tree measurements. It's also um, a measurement that's extremely important because that this one measurement of just... Um, wrapping tape around tree and figuring out how big this tree is then becomes I do this a few hundred times and I'm going to turn that into basal area which is going to get start giving me my square footage of how many trees are in the forest and then my diameter distributions are going to tie in and tell me how big the trees are within the forest 
And once I have that information, I can tie that in with tree height. Now I'm getting volume. Now I actually have an inventory and can start um, estimating out from there how, me how many trees are out here in my stand or in my forest. So it is a simple measurement, but it's the, it's the foundation of uh, our standing tree measurements.